gone to a different place People hide but I see the face The one that's full of pain Their apathy's not affecting us Maybe they ride on a different bus Realize that we'll never change we'll make it out of
Gaming Bets. We accept bets on computer games online since 2011. Referral system for regular users and the first deposit bonus. Gaming Devices Store and the best choice of payment systems. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, Counter Strike and StarCraft, World of Tanks and League of Legends. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. G2A.com. The best video game store ever. Fast as lightning. Solid as a rock! Cheap as duck! <laughs> What's more, you can sell on it because it's also a marketplace! Remember G2A.com! The best video game store ever!
Welcome back, Counter-Strike fans, to the second season of Counterpit. This is, is, of course, the American iteration. I'm Jim Inesso, and joining me back in the hot seat, once again back, it's the unfreddable rhyme animal, PK Noodle. Oh, it's good to be back. It's business time. Oh, this is really the crunch time of the season, isn't it? Because we've got five teams competing. Round robin, only one gets to earn that trip to Croatia to compete in the land finals in March. But now we've only got four games left in the season. This is game number seven of ten. And really for these two teams, which we'll be watching tonight, Splice and Team AGG, standing for Apparitions Got Game. Of course, the former SKDC lineup, which have just been picked up by a brand new organization, branching out into the competitive scene for the first time, which is wonderful to see. Both of these teams still in contention for that first place prize. So there is a premium tonight on getting that win and moving their way up that leaderboard. Exactly right. We're in the business end of the Canopit season. I really couldn't put it any other way because there's only three nights left of play, including tonight. So these teams really have it all to play for. And the bracket is still wide open with a lot of teams not really capitalizing and winning their matches. Well, to put in perspective, within a five-team round-robin group, four of the five teams are still in contention. That's the sort of nature and the cutthroat format that we're in where you must win tonight really to give yourself the best possible opportunity to go overseas to represent your region, be that North America. I know that some of these players obviously hail from Canada, some from America themselves, but I think it's probably fair to give some um, credence and, and, and recognise the fact that AGG are now in the competitive scene because this is wonderful. It's always great to have new organisations coming in. Um, I think they first took their steps really into the CSGO scene about a year ago and actually started to grow themselves via Twitch and via YouTube. Um, really, they pride themselves on being an interactive gaming community in their own words, but this is really the first time in which they've reached out and broached into the competitive side of things, which is wonderful to see. Um, they picked up the old SKDC lineup, three of which are Canadian, the other two American players in the form of Ocean Ls, Twists, Invert and Ruru. Already yesterday, we had the opportunity to watch these guys play, and we saw a lot of potential in some of them. I mean, they took enemy to a draw. It was one map apiece. Um, and sorry, as I was just momentarily distracted, they had did have a draw with enemy, and we saw some great individual talent from players such as Twists and Inverts who were really shining and carrying their team through. So really looking forward to what these guys can do in this organization. I think getting picked up is just going to add a lot of motivation to them and really spur them on now and what better time could you hope for is we're now at that crunch time. It's the perfect time for a team to be motivated. I definitely can't uh, agree with you more there because it's a lot to play for in this back end of the uh, North American Canopy season. Of course, on the line is that first place, uh, that trip to the $80,000 World Finals in Split Croatia. So certainly uh, uh, joining elite companies, we say every time nearly, that uh, they're joining teams that have already been invited to the final, such as Envious, uh, Virtus Pro, Na'Vi, and Astralis, and of course the qualified team from the Australian region, Team Immunity. So it's a fairly stacked bracket. Oh, most definitely. I mean, the land finals in March will be a truly international experience for all of these players, spectators, admins, everyone involved. It's going to be an incredible opportunity to see the world's best talent. But I think for me, what we saw last night from, I'm going to refer to them as AGG, even though they were obviously playing under the SKDC tag last night, we saw that in the first map against Enemy on Cash, Twists and Invert in particular went absolutely ballistic. They were dropping 20s and 30s between them, but it still wasn't enough to get the win on the board, which is really quite concerning. It was only on the second map when Ruru as well really started to perform that they had enough firepower to get over the line. But whilst it's good that they've got that talent, it does place a lot of pressure on some of these players to drop some big numbers to give themselves a chance. From the Splice perspective, these guys have really been punching above their weight quite recently. Of course, their lineup is Aria, Abe, Jason R, Davey, Professor Chaos, some really familiar names there. Players that have been in teams such as Nylum, Elevate, these sorts of teams in the past. Recognizable figures, but for these guys, really the biggest and the best way that I could describe them accurately for those who might not be familiar with them is that they're a really momentum-based team. They're the sort of team where if you were to watch them play at LAN, they're very loud, they're very confident, they're bantering their opponents, they're very, I guess, out there and making a lot of noise, which is wonderful when you're winning. But for these guys, sometimes it can have the opposite effect where if they're losing, they go very, very quiet, they get into a downward spiral, things get out of control, which is why we've seen some giant fluctuations in performance from them. We've seen them beat Optic, we've seen them beat Winterfox, we've seen them lose against Enemy, we've seen them get pushed to the limit by teams such as Easy G and Leader One. So for these guys, the key thing is just trying to get that consistency 
I think they'll be looking to their coach, Jim Garrett, to really be that mental rock for the team. I mean, you yourself have been a coach. I mean, can you share some lot on perhaps? I have been. What, what that coaching role can offer to a team, especially when you're dealing with a lot of personalities? Look, it's a varied role. It's probably not something that's um, really been too well defined, uh, at least in the, the uh, in-game capacity. I mean, obviously, online matches are probably the best opportunity for coaches to have direct input on the gameplay. Um, because a lot of the times in, say, for example, the LAN environment, they're not actually sitting at the PC watching and directly have input um, onto things that are happening mid-round in the game. Whereas, on the, I guess, in the online arena, they have their own PC, they can freely switch between all five players and really add to the direction of the team mid-round if they're lacking direction. Um, but it also has an element of man management as well and really controlling and knowing your players and keeping their heads in the game, keeping them cool, calm and collected when uh, the situation would arise. So I think it's, it's a varied role and um, really just lends itself to the individual to take from it and add what they will. And I think that, I mean, I've got, they've got a perfect person for the job in the form of Garrett. Obviously, he's Canadian himself, an X1.6 Pro, played in the CGS as well, so a lot of experience there on the big stage. But I think the interesting point that you said is the fact that I think the fact that it is online and the fact that they're only playing one BO2 a night for the next few nights, I think that short form competition will really help them because there's um, less chance of perhaps them spot snowballing or spiraling out of control. I think just being able to focus all your energy on just two maps. There's no potential hours and hours of play we're talking about. It's just one and a half to two hours. I think that'll really help these guys. And as we move on to the knife range, the maps, Mirage, obviously, but then Cache, I understand. Yes, as we pronounce it here in Australia, Cache. That's because we pronounce it correctly, Jim. Correct. As you were. But um, as you were saying before, interesting that their coach is, in fact, Garrett on yep. the supply side of things. He plied his trade. Um, under the tuition of the now liquid coach, uh, James, funnily enough. GB James, you're talking GB about. GB James, yes. He's come under a bit of criticism himself for what he does offer to liquid, so I'll just be a bit careful as to how much but, that praise said, you give to him. He was um, a student of the game under James's tuition, so I, in that sense, I do believe they're going to be um, he, a very similar mould of coach, just because... Um, as I said, he plied his trade underneath him. He's going to be coming from the same school of thought in terms of approaching rounds. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a similar role played in the team by him. Obviously, we don't really have too much of an indication of um, how much he plays in that team's dynamics just yet. Oh, no, no, no. Seen, no, no, it's um, massive. It's massive from stories that I've heard of, um, particularly from Moses. He was talking about when they are at the recent MLG American Minor Championship. Of course, they did finish second. They took down Optic on the way to the grand final where they ultimately lost to Enemy. Moses was uh, talking recently in one of his VODs, which is extremely informative and always great to hear from someone who has fantastic insight on the scene about how the first day the results had been so shaky and the players themselves were really off their game, but it was Garrett who really stabilised them. He was that rock for the team and that's why they were able to push forward. So he will have a massive role for these guys. We'll see Splice study out on the CT side. So just to reiterate for everyone, this is a BO2. Only four matches left in the season. We've got Jason R., Aria, Davey, Abe, and Professor Chaos on Splice, who's actually tagged up as ooh, so that'll be interesting. On the Team AGG side, X, SKDC, we've got Ruru, Twist, Invert, Ocean, and Ls, and it looks as though, Jim, they're slowly making their way towards B here on the AGG side, so the defense of Davey will be called into question. And let's just see whether or not these apparitions do indeed have game as they make their way into that site. Of course, pressuring Davey there, but Aria is able to pick up an opening frag. Not before he's binked, though, so he's able to pick up a second. So great work under pressure there. Davey chimes in with a frag of his own, but Els is going to continue to push straight into that checker room as Aria actually is still alive in this site, and a lot of pressure now on Els to uh, pull the goods out, but of course not able to do so. Great... Uh, Great hold from uh, Splice, but of course unable to prevent the plant in that instance. Yeah, fantastic job there from Ari. I mean, the key for me as well, I mean, four frags to Ari is massive, but Davey actually stayed alive for quite some time there, given the fact that he was that really, that man, that solo player towards that B van. So credit to him as well, team effort, but Splice will be happy with that start. I think these guys are the favourites. I'm not quite sure as a pause has just come in, so I'm not quite sure if there will, was some issue with perhaps the coach joining the spectator functionality as opposed to these um or the coaching functionality as opposed to being on spectator there's some chat being thrown around which was suggesting that one of the coaches was perhaps being able to see a little bit too much information and 
<laughs> if that's the case, they might need to do over that round. But in any case, I was just going to say, I think for me this matchup is going to lend itself more towards Splice. I do think that they can come away with a 2-0 victory because I think that having the experience in some of those talented individuals and recognising the importance of tonight's match, I don't think they're going to let it slide. We saw them have a good win last night against Winter Fox in the upper bracket final of the RGN Winter Classic. So they are coming off some good recent form. And I think for Apparitions Got Game, as much as they'd like to put on a fantastic display tonight, which I am expecting of them, I'm just not quite sure if they're just there yet ready to make that next step and get the win on the board because they have had their shuffles recently in terms of rosters. They have only just brought Ruru back into the lineup, so I think they're still gelling as a team. But I think at the moment with the match pause, they're just trying to decide how best to progress. From what I can understand, Jim, perhaps the coaches were watching the opposite team play instead of their own, which is, I mean... Certainly helps from a coaching perspective. Oh, I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> I mean, you can... Yeah, I mean... But don't even anything, know what to say to that. If anything, the, the way that they're um, trying to resolve this, it clearly... Even the pistols mean so much to both of these teams. That's I a mean, really good point. there's a lot point. on the line here. Yep. No, that's a fantastic point. I mean, in the context of this match, we're looking at potentially... As I think the map's just been restarted, so that will probably confirm yes, the they will that they will sort this out on competitive office for anyone. Oh, that'll wondering. be good. I'm looking forward to this. We'll see who's best at rescuing hostages. But no, you raise a really good point there because it just goes to show how much it means to these guys because it's not just a, a match to them. This is an opportunity to secure some points which would potentially lead to them getting the opportunity to go to Croatia to represent themselves, their families, um, their friends, their country overseas. This is massive for these guys because let's be real. There are quite a few big-name teams in America that, for whatever reason, aren't able to participate in this Season 2 of the American stage. I mean, Cloud9's not there, Luminosity, Liquid, CLG, some big-name teams. So as a result, it's given these up-and-coming teams a fantastic opportunity to really assert themselves. We've seen that from Enemy recently. NRG as well put up some great results. Splice, Winterfox, they're all getting results here. And it would mean so much you can be guaranteed to go overseas and strut their stuff on the international stage. Well, that's it, as you said, once you peel away the top layers of um, North American Counter-Strike with those big names, obviously not uh, competing. Um, I think you mentioned nearly all of them there. Uh, yeah, I yeah, did a good it, job. It, it did a fairly good job off Thanks, the top mate. of your head. Not bad. You've, you've yeah. learned quite a lot in this last uh, week and a bit. It's better. been an interesting week and a bit, but I've loved every minute of it. It's mm. been an incredible opportunity to get to learn these plays and teams and try to familiarise yourself to try and provide as much context and information to the audience as we can because obviously... Being from Australia, we know the Oceanic team's best, but it's been an incredible experience, one which we've been so privileged to have, and we really appreciate the support of well, not just everyone out there listening, bantering us for our accents and pronunciation, but also the fantastic admin team and um, those guys behind the scenes who put in so much time and effort. They're there every single second that we're here. They're putting in three or four times as much work behind the scenes to make this possible, so we can only extend so much thanks to those guys. Exactly right. They're doing a fantastic job um, because not only that, it's it's late over there in Europe, and that's exactly it's, where they're entering. Uh, they're admining it from. So they it's were early up, here. You know, it's it's early here. Well, comparatively, yeah. Um, so time zones across the world. These guys are putting in a mammoth effort, but nonetheless, I do believe they're going to be going live again into the pistol. So let's try that again. I think in terms of the match bot, what they'll do is they'll actually have to play through the knife round, but they just want to simulate what we had before in the knife round, and they'll switch the teams appropriately. It's just to make sure that everything's kosher, um, and then we'll see, of course, Splice starting on the CT side. Now, for me, I think the fact that they've already had one run through the pistol round, whilst Splice would have loved to be able to restore from 1-0. I think in terms of a strategy perspective, what we've seen, it's probably not going to have the biggest impact, because let's be real, what we saw from AGG was a slow... Um, walk towards B, a leisurely walk towards B, and then they burst onto the site, but it wasn't necessarily the most complex thing. They haven't just invested hours and hours and hours of time to come up with this game-breaking strategy. I think that both teams will be able to adapt, especially with the amount of Counter-Strike that these guys play, to a do-over. Well, if, if they'd spent hours and hours and hours developing the intricacies of that particular <laughs> B push, that slow B push that seemed very stock standard, then I'd really be concerned for the... Uh, <laughs> the future of North American No, Gamestar. there's nothing to be concerned about. These guys have certainly, the SKDC guys we're talking about, have certainly been a team that's been known for quite some time as an up-and-coming team that is great at developing talent. You only have to look at players such as Stewie2K, who recently played in this very team and is now in Cloud9, so they've got nothing to worry about. You can see, though, Jim, they're doing the old bluff. They're heading back towards B this time, though. 
ocean with a few utility grenades towards t ramp so perhaps trying to convince the members of Splice that they've got this secondary strat. Of course, Splice not to know that... Oh, that's oh. brutal headshot. Splice not to know that it will be a B attack, and they'll know now as Ruru does lead the charge into the side, but it's the same outcome, isn't it? Davey ripping the head off one member before going down. This time, though, it will be a retake here that Splice will have to conduct, given the fact that a few members had rotated towards A or the back of those nades that Ocean was throwing. The bomb planted. It is a 3v4 situation here in favour of Splice. And the flank will come in from both Jason R and Ayef through those B halls and pressure being put on. Hey, just making the most of uh, the single bullets in his chamber. I do believe he was the one that uh, simply dealt with Ocean with a single bullet and of course firing a total of two bullets that round it would seem and having maximum impact. So great retake again, pretty much exactly the same result. A bomb plant in that B site, a retake coming through and uh, of course really nothing won lost or gained by restarting yeah obviously that was just how it unfolded but i think that's probably the best case scenario because that's really like you said how the first iteration went so i'm happy in that regard we will see splice here i mean they're opting to actually have two smgs a shotgun in davy's hands and also two rifles so a bit of a split buy here trying to best prevent the attack from team agg apparitions got game you can see that from their perspective they just have perhaps one or two pistols and a flash grenade as well, which Anders would be very, very impressed with as they do move on to his A site. But poor old Elves. He's just taken one to the hole right there. He's down to 18 points of health as they bust onto this site. Very passive play here from Splice. It should give up another plant potentially, but the great utility grenades put an end to that. And so do the SMGs. They're absolutely slaughtering those Ts there as they merge onto the A bomb site. Great clean round from Splice. Something we've seen American teams have struggling with, keeping those anti heroes quite clean. But Splice putting on an absolute clinic there, Jim. And the matter looks so simple. That's, that, ladies and gents, is how you deal with an anti-eco. A masterclass, if you will. And that it is. But now we move towards what will be the first gun round. Obviously, off the back of that first round plant. AGG able to afford five rifles across the board. Only a few utility grenades to speak of, though. So they'll have to make something happen with these rifles, relying on perhaps the strong aim of individuals such as Twist and Invert. I think him, or Twist himself is only about 16 years old, I think. So very young, these guys, but a lot of talent behind them. You can see them slowly moving their way, trying to take control of mid. It's really Ruru here who will be having the first engagement coming from underpass and spots out the head of Aria. Can't quite connect, though, and that would have been an ever so important kill. Aria there with the open hand. But you can see, Jim, the setup here of the CTs. Very A-centric, isn't it, where they've got four members stacked towards that bomb site. But poor old Davey, the lone man at B. And he's going to be called into action too, too soon. If you look at the uh, the bomb on that overlay up there, that bomb is, of course, making its way through the B halls, but they're just waiting. And he's separated from his teammates ever so much here at the moment. That Molotov will slow things down, but I don't think it's going to be enough. They're going to make their way through and continue to force the issue. That Mag-7 does pick up one frag, Ooh. finds a second as well. Invert, simply uh, given the, the blast treatment, as Davey finds that third as well, Els is also the third victim. Now, Davey, again, is forcing the issue with that shotgun. Great work from Ruru, trying to find that frag. Of course, he's able to find two. Aya is uh, the one to find him, and now just twist at short. That's right, but not for much longer as Aria does finish the deal. But Davey, we're talking up about how difficult it might potentially be for the poor guy in B alone with the Mag-7, mind you. But I love the use of the utility. That Molotov and HE grenade perfectly placed, but... The aim that he also had, that certainly helped as well as he took down three with a few pellets to the face with that shotgun of his. But I think that the decision there to go B, I think that was a reflection of the fact that they didn't have much utility. I think that A is much harder to take when you're trying to make those dry picks, particularly with the numbers that Spice was setting towards that site. So the call itself I don't have a problem with, but just fantastic individual play by Davey, of course. The ex-member of Spice now rejoining the team. We do see AGG here busting onto the A site. This time they're showing that they can make it work with pistols and perhaps last round they would have had more success had they gone that way. They have got two frags. Jason R, Junior Nasty doing his best trying to stop the plant, but we can see it's all to no avail as that wall of smokes will aid the terrorists in their endeavor, but Davey is just showing his prowess here. <laughs> it's not just the mag seven, it's also the auto shotgun that he does have some proficiency with, and as Jason R picks up his third for the round, it's looking ever so difficult now for Els as, again, he's just a copping names to the face left, right, and center, and Davey, I am loving your play at the moment as he's just showing that he can make it work with whatever gun he likes. He's making it rain right now. He's picking up frags left, right, and center of his shotgun. He's got Skrilla coming out the wazoo. <laughs> That's right, we're in about 10k coming into this round. He's 
Unfortunately for his sake, he's invested some of it into utility grenades, which personally I don't think he needs. I mean, he is firing on all cylinders with that shotgun in hand, but this is important now for me, or Judge Society, as we move on to re really be the first opportunity that we'll see AGG to have full weaponry and full utility. I think this will be a better indication of what their overall game strategy will be. We can see Els at the moment just pressuring the A bomb site, but as he runs away, Jason, I would have heard those footsteps, so he would have recognized the fact that Els would have backed off immediately. He'll communicate that. You can see the intent here from the terrorists. They want to take control of mid, vice versa. You can see the counter terrorists quite content to let them do so. They're focusing on trying to shut down these bomb sites. You can see Davy and his teammate Ari, they're pushing very aggressively up to B. And if AGG aren't careful, Davy, the man who's been so dangerous so far, is going to have a field day as he goes on a bit of a hunt here through underpass. Well, they're doing the old wraparound here, AGG, funnily enough. They're actually making their way up short. Funnily enough, as they push through B halls, the uh, the counterflank came in from the terrorists, and now they're putting pressure on this A site. That Molotov doing a great job of making Arya move out of the site, and uh, well, they now have control of the B site. Of course, Jason's able to flank Ruru, trying to get through the uh, little mid vent, and of course, just making things look so easy. They were in great positions there, AGG, and essentially just outplaying um, Splice with. Good read on the round. Yeah, fantastic read. I was actually surprised, to be honest. Whilst I didn't mind the pushes from Splice, I was surprised to see the Professor Chaos, who is, of course, tagged up as Ooh with Ooh. seven O's in his name, just to clarify for anyone wondering, that he didn't actually contest mid with that AWP. In the end, he just relinquished control and inverted, showing why he was such a menace in the, in the I guess, side of poor old enemy yesterday with that AWP in hand, because he was dropping bombs yesterday and he's ripping heads off today, absolutely decimating the head there of poor old Abe at the ticket box. And as a result, he has backed off, but they do have map control here with only four members of the city to contend with. It's Ocean who puts down that good mid smoke there and really should block the vision of Arya. Forcing it, oh, not quite actually. Have a look at this, there's a bit of a gap in the smoke and oh, he should have connected with that. I think AGG have a lease on life with Arya missing that shot. And will he be punished for that? Probably should be in the context of this round as they do move onto the A site now. And poor old Jason R in a world of hurt there as they come at him from all angles. Ruru in the end does get one, gets a second there as well. Before, unfortunately for his sake, copying a team flash. But by this point, he's certainly done his job. Cops another team flash for what it's worth, but gets a third frag. Great work there by AGG. I love the way in which they took control of mid. But poor old Aria, I think if he could have that round over again, he certainly would. Thank you for the one way, would be one way of putting it. But unable to capitalize in that situation just choking his shot so um, that round could have had a very different outcome because I believe Ruru was funnily enough one of the survivors in that incident he went on to kill three in the round so how differently things could have been done if that would have been dealt with in the first instance but nonetheless Splice here are forced to go on to a pistol by as uh, Ruru again opens the account there Davey being eliminated at the B site and they're really just taking their time at the moment uh, AGG and Walking into that trap there is Aya, of course, not before taking out Ocean. So, he did manage to get his man in that instance, but he was traded out very quickly as the A site is opened up. L's finding Abe there, and now just uh, Jason or Junior Nasty to put up some resistance in the A site. He does find a Diggle headshot onto L's, and old mate Professor Chaos is just holding down at the B site. That's right, but the action will definitely be coming in towards A. So poor old Jason R, who's already taking a lot of damage at the moment. That's 30 points of health. Oh, just misses that shot, doesn't he? And looks as though he actually gets one frayed in the end, so great job there. But the Terrors now have control of the A bomb side. You can see that Professor Chaos's position is known. Ruru does a lot of damage. I think actually to his ex teammates, actually, yeah, he is part of, used to be part of Splice. Um, now he's versing them in this competition, so some. Old blood in that regard, but Professor Chaos, there's not much he can do other than try to perhaps salvage a gun in this instance. You can see him just scouting out that AK. He does pick it up, but with so little HP, you'd expect him to back off, and he does just that. But this will now mean that it's actually three rounds in a row for AGG. And crucially, as I made the points in the fifth round, it's they've started winning since they've had all that weaponry and utility. That first gun round was probably a bit of a write-off in the sense that they forced the issue. Um, they all had AKs, only about five nades between them. But since that fifth round where they could get the AWP in the hands of Invert, they could get all the nades they wanted, they've had their way of things. Spice needs to be very careful. Last time we watched them play Mirage against Enemy earlier on in the counterpit season, things really spiralled out of control when they were on their CT side of Mirage, losing a lot of rounds. So they'll be mindful of that. They need to get back on winning ways here. Yeah, I think the importance there, as you said, is placed on utility. 
and that really rears its head when they get into sight, such as A and B, and they need to lock the CTs out, particularly, I guess, more so at A than anything else, because the crossfires are just too hard to shut down if you don't have that smoke and utility, and they end up just being picked apart. It's like shooting fish in a barrel, essentially, is the best way to, to put it. But, uh, of course, they are making their way through and just controlling mid via the underpass here, uh, AGG, and, uh, of course, he's making their way into midcon here. If Ruru is able to get the frag here onto stairs, not able to do so without uh, losing a teammate. Twist actually finding the second as well, looking for that third, and he has just ripped open his A site on his lonesome, and is just making it look so easy for AGG. Davey, though, needs to try and square this ledger. He does find one, and... Uh, not before Ocean's able to find that man on CT ramp. So this bomb is going down at A and the pressure's on Davey. Fantastic work to Butch Pussy. You can see that Davey has absolutely no intention of going for this. Again, that utility that you spoke of getting laid down now to really help fortify this site and prevent the retake. But Twist picked up a triple kill, actually took down Davey to 13 points of health as well. So 3.75 frags or there or thereabouts that round. But it was really his teammates and the way in which they did lay down those smokes in mid-window, and also B-Short, which blocked off that vision and gave him that comfort and security to allow him to move up the mid-connector without having to worry about getting shot in the back. So a perfect example of what you spoke about in terms of having the money to be able to afford that, and that's a perfect example of, I guess, the positive outcome that you can have for your team. And from an AGG perspective, I'm actually loving this at the moment because it looks as though their big power fragment from yesterday twists has continued exactly where he left off. And crucially, he's also joined on the scoreboard there by Ruru. You can see both of them rocking out with eight frags at the moment apiece, and they're really starting to open up these sites and have their way. Yeah, not just eight frags, but more or less impact frags too. These are entries into sites. These are picks when their team really needs them. So it's not just a, a simple matter of putting up the numbers, but putting up the numbers when your team needs them too. So can't really place more of an emphasis on that. That's right. We did speak about how much of a momentum-based team splice were in the pre-game, and this is an example, perhaps, when it's going the other way for them, where it can spiral in a negative manner. They've now lost four rounds in a row. You can see that Davey did obviously save that M4 last round, but the rest of his teammates just have pistols, so it'll be quite difficult, you'd have to imagine, in this instance. I like the fact that AGG, just taking their time at the moment, they're still, whilst they probably recognise that splice are on ego, they're still taking their time using all their utility grenades very wisely. They're not taking any chances at the moment, and I love this play from them. Twist there catches Professor Chaos off guard as goes for a little bit of too much information there and exposes his dome and gets punished as a result. But Davey, there to retaliate, takes down the danger man and does back off without any sort of trade there. So that shouldn't be allowed to happen. As it was, though, we do see AGG, I think, rotating back towards A. But Jim, if you look at the overlay, Three members in the A side here. This is danger signs for Team AGG, and they don't yet know it. Well, it's a trap, is probably the best way to put it. <laughs> because they are walking straight into this uh, net of CTs, waiting at the A side. Of course, there's only uh, three out of the remaining four, but nonetheless, it's still a stack. And with only a few seconds left on the clock, 30 seconds, they really have to make their way into the site. They're going to force this issue here. They have traded well and uh, made the entries into the site. Of course, now all to do... For Davey over at that B site, he does have a cult, so I'd imagine he'd be trying to save it. Most definitely, but it's interesting if you look at this on the scoreboard. If Davey does save this, he's actually positioned quite close, so maybe I'll hold that thought because that might not, not even be an option here as I look at the overlay. I can see so close to Ocean at the moment. One of them surely, and he does get spotted out, but I was just going to make the point. Look at the deaths on the supply site. You can see some members, such as Professor Chaos, only with five deaths. Some of the other members there with six. Now, they've actually played nine rounds so far. So there's a lot of rounds there where they're potentially saving their guns and um, not even in situations in which they can go for those retakes. And that's really a sign of how well AGG have been shutting down these last few rounds. They won five in a row. I think this is just some of this perhaps confidence and some of this added motivation that being in an organization and getting picked up has just brought to the team. I think we're seeing tangible evidence of that right now. They're playing fantastically, this team. You can see that they are setting up for an A execute, mixing up their game place. They've gone away from mid. They've moved towards A here, executing with a minute 30 on the clock. Will they catch them off guard? You can see the smokes well placed to allow them to get into the side. It is Jason who has gone down. Great work there by Ruru, but I'm not sure how he was caught off guard. He should have heard those footsteps. Professor Chaos there punishing Ruru. Gets a second as well. Good work trading onto L. So they are well positioned here for a retake. You can see the bomb obviously planted. Four on three, this situation is. It is Twist, though. He is smoked off in Palace. All of a sudden, it's getting harder and harder here for AGG. Their now positions are, are known. It's always difficult, I think, to hold 
on Mirage. Just there's not many holding spots for a terrorist team. You can see they're being punished at the moment. Abe with that Dak Dak in hand does drop invert, and all of a sudden it's all to do for Ocean and Twist, the in-game leader and the young talent. And with three to contend with, they're still not on the bomb though. They're taking too long here, and as they line up, and the Ocean goes with the spray, he grabs two. Twist gets the last, but Splice. It almost seemed as though they were all intent on getting the frags and no one wanted to defuse. Well, in the end, mission achieved. No one did defuse. Good work, AGG. Yeah, complete confusion there on Splice's behalf. They really needed to have someone stick that defuse because the smoke was there and by the time they decided to get around to it, it had gone. It had faded. The, job, the opportunity had been missed and, of course, it was just easy cleaning from uh, AGG's side of things. Now, they have taken, I do believe... A pause, so I'm not too sure. I'd, I'd hope it was a tactical pause. I think most definitely. I think losing six rounds in a row, I think on CT side as well, a map mirage, I think generally lends itself to CT side. I think the fact that they've really only won one gun round would also all be key indicators for me that it is a tactical pause. But Jim, the only sort of um, explanation or justification that I could provide on last round's retake effort there from Splice, where seemingly in a three-on-two scenario, None of the players from Splice even had any intent, it looked like, to defuse. All I can think of, and I'm not sure if you can correct me on this, but I don't think any or at least many of the players had defuse kits. I think it was one of those situations where they were almost all, without communicating, that relying on their other members or assuming that the other members had kits. And in the end, it was everyone just standing around, not talking to each other, and that was the end result. I mean, do you know if they all had kits? I don't think they did. I can't actually recall the uh, specifics of that okay. round. That, that, that's the only logical explanation I can think of. It was well, just they were all. Yeah. It, it could have been just a complete lack of initiative, too, um, on everyone's behalf. I mean, everyone was perhaps relying on someone else to make the call, that shifting the blame and, yeah, miscommunication, I think, is just really the, the simplest way to put it. I if mean, it was a lack of initiative, specifics. I know how to fix that, Jim. All you have to do is bring back that plus three that Counter Strike 1.6 used to have on oh, terms yeah. of the frag count, there would be complete initiative to jump on that bomb. You'd have situations where players aren't even looking for the frags. They're just straight on that bomb. That plus three is certainly do wonders to the scoreboard. That's how you fix that issue. Oh, that's that's how we amassed most of our frags, isn't it? As in-game leaders. It was the the task that came with planting the bomb. It was, well, it was an entitlement as an in-game leader. And the defuse. That, yeah. They need to bring back the scoreboard incentive, not in terms of points, but in terms of frag counts. <laughs> that was the entitlement of an in game member, certainly by mine is standing. But I think in terms of this match at the moment, I think really worrying signs here for Splice. I'd hope that during this pause at the moment, I think one of the players actually restarted their counter-strike, so they will now unpause it. Hopefully everything's fine now for that player. But I'm hoping that their coach, Garrett, who is in the server with them, I hope he's talking to them at the moment. I hope he's just trying to get them to calm down and play their normal style of game. They're actually playing quite passive in some of the sites at the moment. We've seen them not even wanting to challenge mid at all on some rounds, but from what we've seen so far in Counter Pit, watching them also as well in the recent RGN Winter Classic, which is still ongoing, of course, the minor championship, all these recent comps, they're at their best when they're playing aggressive. I think in the recent Winter Fox match, I recall Davey pushing on Dust 2 every single round. That's when they're at their best, but yep, they've gone away from that at the moment. I think they're almost doubting themselves. So I hope for these guys, they can rectify that quickly because... Like we said, there's no time to muck around. They need the win on the board here. Both of these teams do desperately, and Jim, as the unpause comes in, we can see Splice on an eco round. Yeah, not, not surprisingly either. They've simply just been manhandled in this these last couple of rounds, losing six straight, and of course their economy is suffering as a result of taking those heavy losses, so not surprising to see them doing so. And really, just a, a, a slow approach coming in from AGG, trying to fill out their opponents, um, and just taking control of mid... Ever so slowly, though. They're not really ever committing to anything at all. That's right. You can see at the moment there's just pistols and armor in the hands of all the players. One of the big danger signs that um, you, that is quite commonly associated with teams that are very much an energy-based team, and by that I mean very loud when they're winning, the, the, I guess the polar opposite of that is these teams sometimes tend to go very, very quiet when they're losing. They can lack energy. Now, that can often lend itself to communication issues. Perhaps we saw that eventuate in that defuse situation as they do bust onto A now and make the frags to open it up. But I'm just hoping for their sake that they're just keeping those communication going, that they're still talking to each other, that they're really just still backing themselves. It's so important. It's all left up to Davey at the moment. I think poor old Abe's CS has crashed again. So they'll fix that after this round. So expect another short pause. But from an AGG perspective, Everything is going perfectly at the moment. After losing a pistol, you should hardly ask for a better scenario. Yeah, they're just piling on the rounds and piling on the hurt with 
Uh, splice really not making the appropriate changes, not really adapting too well to the the shift in pace from AGG. And a what AGG are doing really well right now is just varying what they're doing. As we can see them go into an A execute here. So this is uh, again something that has worked for them. That's right, and by the very fact that they've been mixing up, you can see that Splice are actually playing three members towards mid, trying to shut down mid. Well, this round, they're mixing it up and executing onto A, so this is a an example of what you're talking about. There's not many CT defenders now to greet them, as it is, though. Professor Chaos has done a good job of rotating quickly to support his teammate, but poor old Abe trapped in the site. They haven't yet checked in Shadow, though. He's still alive, but the smokes have really blocked his vision. He can't quite connect there onto the ocean. The bomb should get planted somehow with four points of health. He's still alive, and L's. How are you still alive? It's the common theme there is he stood right next to a player going oh no I with one eventually getting a nice double frag but Aria has got two for himself but he has more to do as he finds himself in a one on three situation here and seemingly AGD can do no wrong. Ocean ran into the site there was tagged so low by all means and by all accounts he should have died but he lived. Els was flashed in smoke should have died he lived and got two so everything going their way at the moment but Jim it's often a case isn't it where a team that is being aggressive and taking those chances, has the luck go their way? I have no doubt that when they're writing their memoirs as CS players that they'll be uh, referring to that round as the rounds where they should have died, but somehow didn't. <laughs> and they'll be definitely taking that into account. But of course, we see Davey pushing. Now, this is something good. I like This is a, a change of pace. But of course, he's traded out quite quickly by Twist as Ruru does his best. Kangaroo impersonation, just jumping down the stairs, bounding to his death. And Arya is... Uh, Forced to uh, hold this B site solo now as a result of losing some members early on. And what uh, AGG have done here is just attempted to regroup and they're going to try and make their decisions which site they will hit. Yeah, you can actually see how well the CTs, or not how well, but how they've been forced nearly to just play this 2 2 approach. There's 2 in A, 2 in B, but crucially for me, neither of those pairs are really pushing for information. Obviously, they've got the man advantage, but on a map like Mirage, which is actually a really large map, and a map in which mid gives you so many options, such as going window, underpass, B short, mid connector, to have no vision on that can sometimes be a really scary prospect. As it is, we can see AGG looking as though they're heading towards the B side. They've got 45 seconds left, so there is still time to pull the abort plug and head back in another direction, and potentially doing that at the moment. They're just chilling out in the kitchen. I think they're just trying to potentially catch someone off guard. It looks as though Ari was thinking about pushing, but he will make the smarter decision. Fall back to a good spot in B site here where he can get an early call, perhaps a frag or two, but quickly fall down into the site to the safety that it does provide. And he does just that, gets the drop onto invert, falls down into the B bomb site and waits for his teammate to support him before Professor Chaos. But he's going to need that support a little bit faster. He has gone down here and no exchange has come the way yet. Oh, Professor Chaos is three on two. AGD still gets hit the bomb down though, but L's doing the best he can to allow that to happen. Gets a double kill. Abe jumping out of the window. What was he thinking there with no cover? L's gets a triple onto the head of Jason, and really that round that should have gone the way of Splice, it goes to AGG. Nothing working for Splice at the moment, and really another example of a breakdown in gameplay that should never have happened there. Yeah, AGG just deploying turret L's in that B site. He just sat there and simply moved his crosshair from target to target, and Splice... As we said, making some critical errors in just uh, jumping out that window, for example, and to check into the site with no information, no cover, more importantly, and essentially just lemmings style running in one by one. In inexcusable for me. The only thing I can think was that he was so intent on trying to stop a plant, given that the bomb hadn't gone down. But really, still, I, I don't think that's justification enough to just give your life away like that and to run in um, needlessly. So... Big mistake there, and it's just the sort of thing that we're talking about, unfortunately, for a team like this when things are going bad. As more bad situations unfold, it just compounds the situation. All of a sudden, the guys are going to be even more down, and they're even more susceptible to making silly decisions and throwing away their lives. So unfortunately, it's just a compounding effect. We've seen this from Splice in the past. We've seen them bounce back, though, and play well. But at the moment, we're only seeing the negative sides of their gameplay as AGG again did a nice opening frag there until four sport Splice. And they're going to go back into an... A fake here is that bomb as we see on the overlay has made its way to the B hall. So AGG just having the rub of the green and being able to do essentially what they like at the moment, having that man advantage. And uh, Professor Chaos is the man on point here. Finds the first frag with the Deagle, quickly picks up that AK as well. So he's done his job already in eliminating what could potentially be an A push. They still do have three members there and only Davey sitting in short 
I do believe it's no, the no, no. trying to defend the site. Or underpass. The underpass. Underpass. Yeah, he's on invert the flanking mission it. here. Now, look at this. Davey here on the flank. He will he invert, though, potentially running. No, invert does go towards mid. But in any case, it will be Davey versus Twist. And Twist does win out in that instance. Continues on his merry way with the frags. Leading the charge with 13. And great use of utility here as they Molotov and smoke the choke points to really block off the vision. And all three CTs stuck in the same place. They have no option but to back off and... When the score currently reads 9-4 and you're on the CT side of Mirage in a deficit, it's never a nice feeling, but there's not much they can do about it in this instance. They're just getting blown out of the water. They're getting outplayed. They're getting outsmarted. And the scoreboard reflects that at the moment. We do see Invert there really getting an easy frag onto Ari. He wasn't even looking towards mid-con, so poor old Splice. It's all falling apart for them. You can see on the moment on the scoreboard, this is going to be 10 rounds a row in which they've been able to string together here. Really just justifying to... Team AGG Apparitions got game that they are a team worth investing time and effort into because they've got so much potential with these young guns in the team. And they're just making it look so easy at the moment. The team play for these guys is simply what's winning them the rounds. Their reads late game, or late, should I say late game, uh, mid round, are essentially what is uh, turning the tide back in their favour. They might not uh, necessarily have the opening picks from time to time, but nonetheless, they're making it work. And this is uh, evident in the sense that they've gone on a run of 10 rounds in a row. Splice have had no answer to that whatsoever. It's one of the hardest things that I've found so far in our little tenure here of having the privilege and honour of casting NACS is that we've seen so much great CS from teams, but by the same token, we've seen these same teams play, to be fair and to be honest, really, really average, if not poor at times. And... I sometimes struggle to comprehend in my head how come we see these giant fluctuations. It's not just Splice. Many a team in this league. That's why there's no clear standout winner. Teams are winning and losing matches consistently, and it's something that really stands out to us when we're coming in, I guess, from a third-party perspective. Obviously, Australia being the area in which we do reside, at least by day. By night, we're at European, casting European counterpick. We're everywhere. We're everywhere, but as it is, Team AGG seemingly are everywhere at the moment from a splice perspective. You can see Dan Paps Jim going for this A fake, three and A, bomb making its way towards B. Yeah, this is something that ran pretty much last round, and it worked for them quite well. Um, obviously, circumstances were a little bit different. Um, as we see Aria with that AWP, and in fact, now four members towards that A site. Davey, though, pushes. Not a bad play, I don't rate that from... Uh, actually, I do rate that, sorry, from Davey. Just needing the information there, but of course, he's fallen. And now that bomb is actually going to make its way back through underpass. So, they faked the death camera here, and hoping and banking that the CTs will actually be rotating their way through CT spawn through, as Els is in a good position there. The bomb actually has been felled in the middle of A, and it's just uh, Abe to try and defend things from the ticket box. He shows his dome, but of course, Twist doesn't capitalise on that situation. That bomb, though, is being planted. He's being planted for short, so... With uh, a member in CT, obviously not ideal for him at this point in time. Abe needs to make this frag here as that Molotov really forces him to move from his position. Els is just playing this so well and waiting for his teammate to come around that box. But, uh, of course, that flank of Ruru ar arrives and uh, the half so arrives as well. What a comprehensive scoreline. Massive, massive shout out and props to AGG in this instance. From 4 0 down to streaming 11 rounds together, everyone was contributing on the scoreboard. Obviously, we're giving a lot of praise to Twist and Ruru for their efforts in particular, but everyone was contributing. I think, from a splice perspective, the best thing they've done so far, in the words of our codecaster PDG, is to join the server because they've really had a tough run of things at the moment. They just seemingly aren't making the right reads. I think it's just got worse and worse for them as the matches progressed. Something I just want to explain as well from that last round is we did see, obviously, they were setting up for an A fake, but ended up going B. That was due to the timing at which they killed Davey there with the B push. They actually killed him very early on as the fake was only just starting, and the terrorists there were concerned about the fact that the CTs would have that information that the bomb was B and would rotate very quickly. Had they killed Davey perhaps later on after the fake had started to, I guess, develop and the CTs would have been committed to the A site, they would have pushed on to B. But due to the timing of that frag, they did opt to take it back towards A and ultimately got the bomb down over there. But Jim, from Splice's perspective, 11-4 down, moving on to the T side here. I mean, is there any hope for them? I mean, what do they need to do to get some life back into them? They don't look like their normal selves. Well, I'd imagine um, Garrett would be... Just trying to calm them down, trying to reset them, um, essentially, in, in his uh, coaching role. Now, he'd be setting uh, small targets for them. Uh, he'd be setting those those small goals. All right, guys, now we need to, to win the pistol. He'd place a premium on that. And then, of course, placing a premium on winning the subsequent 
rounds there, if they do manage to do so quite cleanly, they can find themselves at an 11-7 um, deficit. And then from there, winning the first gun round and so on. And it's just a flow-on effect. So essentially, just resetting his team mentally and uh, going on from there. That's fantastic insight because what you said there is absolute gold in the sense that I think um, perhaps is a philosophy that I think needs to be widely accepted and recognized when you're in that sort of tough situation where you're trying to make a comeback in terms of setting yourself small goals. What we're talking about is obviously they need to win 12 T rounds or 11 if they want to win in overtime. That goes without saying, but that can obviously be a massive mental block. And what you're suggesting is the coach in this instance, it doesn't always have to be the coach, it can be a player, but just breaking down that target into manageable, achievable goals, whether it just be the pistol round or perhaps getting to a round target. Look, if we can get to eight rounds, and then maybe the next one will be let's get to 12 rounds. Just setting your team little objectives so that as they tick them off, hopefully, they feel more confident, they feel as though they're progressing closer towards what they need to do. That's fantastic insight. Obviously, yourself used to be the coach of Team Chiefs. Um, they are currently the number one ranked team in Australia. They've just been representing our region over at the IM Taipei qualifier at the or the IM Taipei Asia Minor, I should say. So certainly you have that experience as a coach there and that's absolute gold for anyone listening. Well, we do try and, uh, you know, at least make some parts of our cast meaningful. Oh, not much of it though, to Not be much, but, you know, in dribs and drabs. But, but we can see here, we will at least keep it serious for this we next digress. moment. We digress. We do see Splice here, of course, on the back foot, but they are setting up for an AF with you. But look at the timing here. Ruru getting so much information as he pushes up mid. And whilst he might bypass Davey, who's actually lurking in that underpass, he will make the read to his teammates that he hasn't seen anything. And to prepare for an A attack, you can see the twist and invert. The two guns of this team are actually positioned towards the ticket box, trying to do as much damage as they can without necessarily putting themselves in harm's way. Well, we saw how well that's worked out for them in the sense that Professor Chaos has just grabbed two frags and still hungry for a third. Perhaps they should have backed off though as Arya's punished for that aggression. Els picks off one Ruru with another. So all of a sudden, what looked to be an easy round for Splice, going the way of the CTs. We're down to a two on two. Davey though, that lurk proving just how dangerous it can be as he gets the last three frags of the round. Good job, but from lo what looked like an easy situation for a moment, very, very scary. Well, Professor Chaos was actually the one tasked with being what uh, Sam Lorenet has actually referred to as the raid boss. He was the guy with the Tech 9 and the armor. He was essentially the T-1000 in that instance. He was tasked with just being the guy that was sent to back in time to kill John Connor and open up the uh, A site. Of course, he did do that. But uh, now they achieve that first small step, that first goal. Jim, I just asked you, by the way, I've never seen Terminator 4, so please no spoilers about any more Terminator-related stuff as we move series. on. Please, just no more spoilers for me. I haven't seen it. But in any case, we do see Splice here. Now, Jim, this is really interesting for me. Look how many rifles they've invested. Four rifles, be that AKs or Galils. That's a really conservative approach to this round. I mean, it's not going to get them much money in the way of money bonuses that SMGs would offer. Obviously, in theory, it would give them the best possible chance of making those frags, though. But to me, that's a real indication that the team is really worried at the moment. I actually don't like this buy at all. I think that their best chance of making a comeback is by controlling the economy, of by keeping AGG in a situation where they can't afford to buy orbs, where they can't afford to buy grenades, when they themselves have dank bank as we refer to it. But at the moment, by taking this conservative approach, whilst it might be safer this round, in five rounds' time, what's going to be better for the team? That's right. The uh, con control and uh, discipline they show now will pay off in later rounds, as you said. Now, interesting for me, we've seen a few teams try this UMP by, um, particularly on their eco rounds. It has actually paid dividends. That UMP is a really effective weapon at shredding through armor, of course, though. They have lost the uh, entries onto that B site and been locked out. All three CTs just sitting helplessly in that checker room at the moment. They're just trying to catch someone off guard. Ruru is actually able to pick up someone with uh, that CZ, and uh, Els is actually able to capitalize on that uh, UMP, doing exactly just that, shredding through the uh, armor. Now, great frag there from Arya, able to uh, just stop the potential diffuser. Abe is in a good position as well at short. They are trained on his position. Twist takes him down as well with the double frag. Straight onto that Diffuse, and of course, that 40-second bomb timer is going to allow them to actually win this round. Is there time? I think there is. I think he's got it. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yes, I can well, count. No, well, I was just making sure. I just needed to make sure you were informing the viewers accurately. But, I mean, what do you make of that? We actually said that Splice had taken the conservative approach of buying rifles, 
not with a long-term vision of boosting their economy, but trying to make sure that they actually closed out that anti-Ico round. Well, they failed in that objective. Oh my goodness gracious, in a four-on-three situation, having locked out AGG out of that bomb site, that is an unlosable round by all accounts. But Spice have done it. They've, they've managed to. And they now find themselves down 12-5. Their money's been reset. Of course, they have Force Forward. It's the only option for these guys in this situation. So they have Tech Armor and a few flashes to support them. They will be attacking the A-bomb site, but nothing going their way. If you needed any further proof, just look at last round's horrible post-plant situation. We do see them now smoking off, trying to create a wall with those smokes, trying to block out the CTs, but Ruru, he's so tempted to run on through. Will he do it? No, he'll just wait there. They'll come to him, he decides. He does get one frag, spans through. Can't quite convert it onto a second, but the T should get the bomb plant to hit. That'll at least set them up well, potentially, for the next few rounds. The fact that they're dying now, though, doesn't bode well for them this round, as we do see Twist grabbing one. In the end, though, Davey does take him down, Jim, and the CT's forced to retake. Yeah, I do like the... Uh Move they tried to make to push into CT. There's Davy collects Ocean. And uh, Professor Chaos actually finds a frag of his own as well. Davy finds another one on Invert and now just forcing this one versus one. Davy dances around that ticket box, but of course, Michael Flatley impressions are not going to win you rounds. As and for the uh, second round in a row, it will be the 10 second defuse coming in to seal the deal. Again, not much time left on the clock, but from an AGG perspective, whilst it's a bit unfortunate that so many of you died, you couldn't care less. You're thrilled at the prospect that you're currently up 13 5. Every single round in which you're winning now, no matter the context, no matter how ugly the round looks or how good the round looks, it's just doing so much damage to the mindset of Splice at the moment. They're just getting more and more demoralized. And whilst this map is probably over from a Splice perspective, in, in, if I'm being it. brutally honest, You've done I'm a calling sponge. it, I think it's also affecting the potential performance of Splice on the next map. So from an AGG perspective, I want to close this out now. I really want to rub this into the faces of Splice in the nicest possible way. That uh, pretty much links back in with a, a boxing philosophy. When you've got them on the ropes, you've got to finish them, and now it's the time that they've simply just got to finish their opponent as uh, they do execute onto A. They do have a little bit more utility on them this time, of course, uh, pushing right through those smokes as Professor Chaos finds one frag. We'll try and find a second one here, but of course he's backed up quite well by Abe. So they've r pretty much just run right onto this A site and taken control of jungle. Now the retake will come in with uh, Twist and his teammate at City Ramp there. Els is in a firefight of his life, unfortunately not able to do so. Twist finds the frag though, but Abe is in a great position to get the flank. Does find the flank frag there as well, and now Ocean is in a world of trouble here, not able to retake. Yeah, that's right. Does get taken down by Professor Chaos in the end. And ultimately, whilst they'd retaken Bombsite A and B successfully in the previous two rounds, they couldn't quite make it three in a row. So really good execution there, actually, from Splice. Really got up in the faces of Team AGG, particularly at Jungle, where those first frags went down. And obviously at close range, those Tech 9s can be ever so deadly, quite like a machine gun. But um, as it is at the moment, I like the fact that AGG probably just consolidating their economy. They've opted to eco. They've got so many rounds in the bank that there's no need to panic or force the issue. Obviously, we've seen how deadly they can be on Ecos. They've already won one so far in this half, and as they do get a frag there, they collapse on mid. I love this mid stack. All of a sudden, Professor Chaos finds himself under a lot of pressure. Does a good job there to get a triple for himself and turn this round back in their favor. But still, in any case, AGG X SKDC doing a fantastic job here of really pressuring Splice. I like the way that they all poured out the midcon there. Pretty much action Bronson as they. Uh... Went into this oh, a cheeky little bink from uh, Invert there to Jason R at the top of mid. Junior Nasty is going to need to recover from that. And try and reclaim that bomb, of course. Davey doing some good work. Finding the double there. The first one with the Molotov, the second with the uh, AK. But of course, just closing that gap. They've still got a long way to go, though. Something that I really like when I look at the scoreboard from an AGG perspective, obviously Twist, Ls, Ruru, they're all put out massive numbers. But I love the fact as well from an Ocean standpoint, whilst his scoreline is 9 frags and 13 deaths, the 6 assists to me is crucial because it means as the in-game leader, he's doing a great job of putting his teammates in a position to succeed. He's supporting them well. He's really contributing even if he's not necessarily getting the frag. So everyone on AGG really doing their best at the moment to get this win on the board. Of course, tonight means so much. There's only four matches left, including this in the counterpit season. And really, both of these teams still in contention for that first place prize. You can see AGG, obviously, given the fact that they all have pistols in hand, you can probably deduce, like we have, that they are an eco this round. And interesting that Ocean has gone down in a bed of flames. Normally, they, fire uh, gets extinguished managed, in water, but not this case. They to boil the ocean. Yeah, you know, uh, the pure physics of it just doesn't make sense to me. But as it was, it's happened. I'll let you explain that. 
Well, speaking of uh, something that's happening here, they are going to make their way towards this B site now. Twist with that Deagle doing some damage to uh, Professor Chaos's dome at short. Now he's going to be joined shortly by his teammate Jason, who does find Invert, and they know where Twist is, but they've got to contend with him. He's only on 8 HP, but they're sort of trapped here. They have to take this fight at the moment. It's too much to do for Twist. Of course, only being 16 years of age and putting up so many frags already, he's been billed as the next big thing. Um, or one of the next big things in North American Counter-Strike up there with the uh, Cooster. So, keen to see how he develops throughout the uh, the lifespan of uh, this AGG team. Well, that's right. I mean, this is one of the benefits of getting the opportunity in Counterpit to watch these up-and-coming teams. The young talent that you speak of are on display. We can see here Splice moving with a little bit more purpose towards A. Actually, I like that. They actually shared the orb to Davey, who would have had a good spawn towards A, trying to get that early pick. But as it was smoked off, he did back off. But sharing the guns there, recognizing the fact that they could potentially exploit Lord Gaben's gift to them of a good A spawn. But as it is, they will set up for an A execute. And the smokes and flashes now come rainy in. You can see three members here make it four of AGG well positioned to defend it but poor old twist in the middle of the site he's quite behind but professor chaos not showing any intent there to clear the site and he's punished as a result twist picks up a triple frag there gets the headshot of re there after taking down jason and professor chaos himself so i think the priority there was a little bit off as professor chaos jumped the gun trying to get that bomb down and with two members in the site that's never going to work out well ells gets the fourth and all of a sudden davy the lurker of the team the man who tried to get that opening frag with the all finds himself with it all to do he does drop in but spots out one the side as well, but Ruru here well positioned on top of the stairs to spot him out. It's important that AGG don't take these individual picks. I want to see them work together here. They've got three members, they've got the bomb down in the site. They don't need to be hyper aggressive here and throw their lives away. Yeah, important that they don't lose members here because uh, one more frag will simply tip them over the economic edge, as we'll put it. Because if you lose three members in a round, essentially you're not able to cover your losses. These guys that will survive will be able to drop. Uh, and cover well the uh, the losses of their two teammates and essentially gift them guns into the next round and have a better chance of buying. If they lose this next man, of course, which they do, Davey's able to do the damage. They're not going to have an optimal buy next round, essentially. So they need to hold on here because, of course, if they do, they're going to get themselves onto match point. That's right. Having said that, though, I mean... They are on 14 rounds now, so you'd probably, even if it's the fact that only two survive, they'd probably take it at this point anyway, given that they're so close to getting over that final hurdle now. You'd just think that potentially one more round here might break the back of Team Splice 14 8. We're looking at the fact that Splice there, I mean, I can't say it again um, and reiterate it enough, but the fact that they really had their priorities uh, misplaced there as they went for that bomb plant straight away instead of potentially clearing out the site really hurt them in the end. You can see now they've opted to stay away from that A. They're opting to try and take mid control, which I quite like, but with mid con not smoked off properly, Ruru will exploit that, finds a little hole there and rips the head off Aria, the captain and in game leader of Team Splice. And Davey eventually retaliates, but takes a lot of damage as a result. But with all these frags as they're going down in mid, it just feeds AGG so much information as to what potentially Splice might be up to. They're going to continue to make their way into this site before they're met with the great wall of invert that uh, orp in close range being used so well and effectively as a shotgun. Though he is taken down by Professor Chaos, so they do take some mid control, but they're in an awkward position at the moment. Two CTs sitting on that, that ramp, and of course they need to try and uh, make the frags, I guess, because the utility at the moment isn't that healthy. They don't really have two flashes and a Molotov. L should be trying to get himself in a good position. Um... For the team, but of course, on the T side, it's only Professor Chaos that has any utility, and they're just caught in this limbo, Nick. This is dangerous. Well, that's right. They've just wasted so much time, haven't they? About 30 seconds have elapsed with them really not achieving much. They will now move towards the A side, though. Twists there at the ticker box. You hear them planting, but the good bomb positioning from Professor Chaos will give him some cover, at least temporarily. He's tagged down in the end, but Elves comes to support his teammate and does more than that as he rips the head off Jason in dramatic fashion. Another member falls. Davey's gone down. All of a sudden, Professor Chaos is the last man alive, but not to be. AGG moved to that 15th round win. They now have seven match points here, and the team that was billed as probably the under the dogs come into counter pit, find themselves with an opportunity to take one step further towards having that opportunity to represent their country. And the talking point for this round is going to be just how uh, shattered the economy is of spices. I'm not too sure what actually happened there. I think the coach for Team AGG actually lagged out, so you had to rejoin the server and I think you have to join a team before you can use the coach uh, functionality. I hate it when that happens. In any case, continue, as you were.
But of course, their economic situation means that they're on an interesting buy. Davey, in fact, opting for that sawn off shotgun. He's so used about every other shotgun so far this match. It doesn't surprise me to see Why him not? using the sawn off. Why not? But of course, Tech Nines across the board. A little bit of utility to spare, and at the moment, coming up against the fully stacked. AGG, and they're going to make their way onto this site. Of course, the smokes have gone down, and they're going to make their way into that plant. So, of course, that bomb has gone down. Arya is able to get that plant for his team. And of course, they're going to put pressure onto Invert here. Professor Chaos, though, has to contend with Ruru on the flanks. They're able to do so quite effectively and actually say salvage some frags here in this round. He's going to change his position around to the palace here, and there's only two CTs remaining. Both of them at the ticket box. They're going to put a lot of pressure here on this site, but of course, that bomb is ticking, and they're not in a great position. I do believe they're just going to try and save their guns here, but Els is trapped in an unwinnable situation. That flank coming in from Aria. Great work. Splice, hold on. That's right, as much as they would have loved to save those guns, Aria certainly had other ideas as he took down the two retreating CTs there at the ticket box, catching them unawares there in the CT spawn. 15-9, the scoreline reads, that will reset AGG's economy, so for a little while longer, the hopes of Splice continue, but it's going to be a tough ask. They've got one round in a row, they need another six, obviously, to take it to overtime, and the fact at the moment that AGG really aren't getting pressured in mid, I think that really bodes well for them. I think it's the rounds in which they're committing onto the sites from a splice perspective and are able to get into a bomb site and really get in the faces of AGGs, which is when they've had the most success. You can see that from a splice perspective, Davey D, another frag here. They'll be happy with this, obviously. Davey's actually up to 22 frags at the moment, and you probably wouldn't know it, given the way that most of these rounds have gone, but he's really been putting up some numbers for the team, doing a fantastic job. Be that shotgun in hand or rifle, as it is. Ari gets a frag, and Davey actually gets his second for the round as well, just as we talk him up. So this will be another round, going the way of Team Splice. They are just picking apart the counter terrorists who are on an economy round here, but they're just focused on the next round. They're not so worried about the fact that they're dying right now. I'm just going to make comment on the effectiveness of Davey. Um, his frags are essentially coming as uh, he's covering his teammates. So whilst they're not opening frags or entry frags, some of the time, he's still getting some entries of course, but uh, they are effective frags. And essentially are what's uh, securing uh, Splice these comeback rounds. Now, Aria just finishing the job there, and making sure Twist can't save that gun, more importantly. So. Another eco round I'd expect would come out from AGG at this stage. Not, they don't need to force the issue. Um, they still have a few rounds to play with, of course, and they don't really need to try and uh, force buy in this situation because that would damage their economy further and essentially uh, make them uh, less viable in the future rounds with that fragile CT economy. We do see Aria there getting the drop into invert in windows, so he's doing a really good job these recent rounds with that AWP. It's been interesting to watch Splice over the last few weeks. They've actually been juggling that AWP between both Aria and Professor Chaos. Tonight, though, he's clearly feeling it at the moment, but it's a lot of responsibility. Captain, in-game leader, AWPer, and you can see at the moment that he's trying his best to shoulder that load. They have got one frag, like we said, making their way back now towards A. There's actually, if we look at the overlay, two CTs, well positioned in the site to at least try and catch maybe one or two terrorists off guard. Ruru is at close quarters as well there in winter room, so and he'd even notice he could turn around, swivel on a dime and support his team, but you'd imagine that this would be Splice if they take the time to check out the site properly. Ruru there, I think, at the back of those smokes coming over the A site. They will stack towards A, obviously the go-to be skips. And five frags have just gone down or four frags, so a rather dramatic fashion. One, two, oh, skip a few. Yeah, Round yeah, well, that's, yeah why not? Look, 15-11, that's the key thing for me. And AGG now, this is their round in which they are investing. Invert with that AWP in hand. Whilst he's not leading the way on the scoreboard, he was a impact fragger yesterday in their match against good old, I think it was, uh, enemy. Yes, enemy. So it'll be important for his sake that he can try and put that to good use. And he is taking it towards B. There is one member down there in the form of Davey. You can see with the form of the X-ray that potentially if Davey's not careful, we might get caught off guard. And CT's here well spread, spread apart to start the round. Nothing coming the way of the terrorist endeavors so far. They're moving their way up mid, but yet to really take a duel. And having said that, though, all of a sudden, three members just fall where they stood ocean. Picks up two. I think he was actually well positioned at short there. And in the span of about five seconds, poor old Abe finds himself in a one on five situation. He's taken down Rue, but his team's hopes rest on his shoulders now. Poor old Abe. He's had troubles with his connection so far this match. Dropped out a few times. He'll be hoping that it's all working for him now, though, as he does get spotted out by Twist at the stairs. Twist will back off towards that A side and reposition himself behind the bomb box as it is. You can see so many angles to contend with here and surely this will see the end of Splice on this map. Abe trying to make his way towards B short. 
to gather that bomb. He throws that flash towards Atron, or at least gain himself some safety there as he moves. He doesn't want to get shot in the back, but there's a CT boost over the box. It will be Invert who signals the end of the match. 16-11, Team AGG. Apparitions got game. They certainly do. That was very impressive. Uh, put it that way from AGG. Obviously, as we said, just being picked up uh, last night, I believe. So, only a recent acquisition for Team AGG. Uh, obviously, they were... Um, yesterday playing in Counterpit as SKDC. So for anyone that might be slightly confused as to why uh, there's this inclusion of a new team, uh, they are, in fact, the former SKDC lineup. And, of course, taking this map, this first map of uh, Splice, who, uh, from all accounts, got out to a four-round lead and simply fell behind from there. I can't reiterate enough how much a 16-11 scoreline in favour of AGG, is so, so um, overstated for Splice in terms of how well they performed. By that I mean that um, 11 rounds is extremely generous. They got blown out of the water completely. The fact that they lost 11 straight rounds in the first half on the CT side, they were really out of it at that point. The fact that they were managing to pull together a few rounds towards the end of the match when AGG was struggling to put together